Hello everyone and welcome to this video. My name is Fahad Alavi and today I will talk about how to use RSA algorithm for signing a JWT token. If you are not familiar with JWT token and you are not familiar with how to use encryption algorithm, I highly recommend to watch my JWT video, my refresh token video and watch my playlist, which is about how to encrypt, decrypt, hashing, asymmetric encryption and symmetric encryption. I will place all the links to my videos down below here in the description. Okay, let's go to the code. The first thing that we need to have for an RSA algorithm is to generate some keys, because if we want to generate the keys every time on the fly, we cannot share them with anyone. For sharing the keys, I have a project here, project called Key Generator. In this part, I'm just uh, saying that I'm going to save them inside a folder and creating the folder, creating the path creating one RSI instance using rsi.to.xml string, I can generate and extract my public key and private key. By passing true to this method, it is going to generate the private key. And by passing false to this method, it is going to generate and create my private, sorry, public key. And I need to create two files. I'm going to name them private key and public key and write this XML file, this public key and private key XML to these files. Let me just run it. Key generator, run the application. It will be a really fast one. As you can see, now it is done. Let me go to my hard drive and see it. Bin debug .NET 8 and we have these two keys i can open them but uh, in the previous video i just showed you what is the difference between the content of public key and private key just have it in mind that private key by definition should contain public key as well which means that if you have a server which is responsible for signing or which is responsible for encrypting which needs private key for decrypting and for validating you can use private key as well because private key by nature should contain the public key as well okay let me see i just need to copy this file let me go back to my project structure i want to paste it here for my authentication server and for my client application the whole goal of this video is to show you how to use an authentication server that you generated and it is going to provide your clients with JWT tokens without sharing the password. As you can remember, in the JWT video that I created, we had a server which was responsible for authenticating and generating the token. And we had some UI projects and in the UI projects, we just used and consumed the token. But for doing that, we shared the secret between this out server and my UI. Uh, the project structure that you can see here is exactly the one that I used for creating refresh token. You can find this project uh, inside my GitHub account. I will put the link here down below and let's check the project the first thing that i need to check is the launch setting this out server will be run on port 1592 we need it because one of the solution items that we have is this thunder client export file i created that one for you and placed it here as you can see it is for testing the application we can send some requests for registering a user logging in refreshing the token and the good thing about thunder client is that when you send a request to the server it will store the token inside a variable and the next time that you want to check if your user has access to an endpoint or not the b-rail will be generated in the runtime when you send the request in this collection okay let's go and see in the out services i will check that what is the expiration of my token it is 20 minutes fine because in the previous project in, uh, for a refresh token we changed it to 20 seconds and just for the simplicity, we are not validating the issuer and audience and actors. 
and if i go to the program file program.cs you will see that i set all of them equal to false my application is using symmetric security algorithm symmetric security algorithm is a kind of algorithm that lets you use just a key for encryption and decryption and we store this key inside my app setting fine now it is time to change it the first thing when we need to have is to check if we have access to this key or not and for the authentication server we don't need to have the public key because as i said let me show it to you here this is the content of the public key it starts with something like that and if i just open my private key side by side you will see that my private key has the content of the public key here you can compare them good i don't need to have public key in my alt services and i need to have the address the path of this file here in my config file this is the private key path keys slash private key dot xml fine now it is time to change my authentication process in the authentication process let me just okay, collapse yeah the first place that we need to change is this generate token string in the generate token string we want to generate the token and for generating the token we are reading this key but it is not what we want anymore we need to read the file and pass the content of the file to one instance of the RSA algorithm and let them know that it is the private key. Uh, let me just comment out this part and just create an RSA algorithm and read the file from the from this path. I'm reading the path from the configuration file and load this XML information related to the private key to my RSA algorithm key. Now we have the algorithm and the algorithm is ready and the key is injected to the RSA instance that we have. We need to create the security key, RSA security key. Let me just create it. Okay, oops. RSA security key, we generated the key and now it is time to tell to my jwt security token class that instead of using the signing credential that we had earlier use the signing credential which is using rsa algorithm for signing the token uh, and here we just explain that it should be rsa sha 265 uh wait a second rsa sha rsa is a symmetric algorithm sha is a hashing algorithm can you remember that in the previous video i said for signing something first we hash it then place the hash at the end of the token or message or whatever you want to name it and then we encrypt it and we call it signing it is the reason that we are telling it what is my asymmetric algorithm and what is my hashing algorithm okay fine now it works uh, let me see i am using this symmetric key uh, for getting the token principle as well when we when i wanted to extract something from the token how to do that uh, we are we need to have a security key let me see we are generating the security key here then it is better to just create a function and call it get rsa key yeah it should work and then here instead of passing this one let me just call it var security key equal get rsa key and use it here fine 
Now we are using RSA for signing the token. What for validating? Let me go to the program.cs. Here in the program.cs, we are using symmetric security key, but we need to change it to a symmetric one. First, I need to generate this RSA exactly the way that I did it for my services in my out service. I need to load the XML file and inject it to the RSA key. And instead of using this uh, issuer signing key, I'm going to use the new one that I generated, which is RSA security key and it should work let me go to the development tools oops it is running let me clear it and now run it using command.net watch i'm using console for running my application because i need to have more than one web application um, up and running at the same time uh, then console gives me this capability to run more than one application at the same time let me go to the thunder client and test it for logging in internal server error it cannot log in let me check it oh here it says that we do have an issue uh, let me run the application again using control C yes and dot net watch and see what happens it shouldn't throw an exception like that yeah now it works we can log in we can refresh our token we have one controller we have one endpoint in the out server to check if it is authorized or not we have one normal one just to be sure that it is working i'm going to remove this jwt and save it from the environment now if i just run the authorized test endpoint it throws unauthorized and i can be sure that this logging in and passing the variables between the endpoints is working let me go back to my application ui api the first thing i need to do is removing the private key because private key is something that you need to store on your computer store on your azure key vault keep it safe it should be private and the public key is something that you can and in some cases you should share it with clients uh let me see what do i need here first of all i need to add the path to the application setting in this application setting and let's get rid of the rest of the information useless information that i don't want now i have the path for the file here and in the program as you can see i am using this symmetric security key let's copy everything from the other application the out server application and use this rsa as the issuer signing key let me change it i, I forgot it public key now it should work we have a key we are reading it from my hard drive it is the public key and i'm going to validate everything all the requests all the tokens using this asymmetric algorithm via this public key fine and let me check what do we have here what else do we have here we have a home controller it has one get endpoint and the other profile endpoint but this profile endpoint it is an authorized endpoint which means that you need to be authorized let me run this one oh i have an error 
what is the error it says that the rsa is not acceptable and of course it is not acceptable because i should say new rsa security key yeah i need to pass the security key not the key itself uh now it should work let's try it again let's give it time yes if i run the and execute the get method it returns the value but about the profile let me try it it returns an authorized response inside my developer powershell i have my out server up and running now it's time to test it let me log in again okay it is working and this authorized controller inside the out service is working as well now it is time to test everything in the consumer ui in the ui which needs to verify the token for get for using get we can use it easily let me close everything and for profile if i run it we can see that the token validated successfully it is the safest way to do that just use public key and private key keep the private key safe and just for yourself and share the public key with the rest of the people and uh, there are some other things that you can keep in mind to make your token based authentication safer as an example do not use uh, one expiry more than an hour for any of the tokens because especially if you are working in a critical domain like banking or security related things because there is always a chance that in that one hour time your user get deactivated or deleted or uh, just uh, something happens to the user inside the database then it is better to use a token validation for maybe 20 minutes and let them refresh the token after each 20 minutes and because we are checking the users inside the database and all the privileges of the user in the refresh token generation when we are calling the refresh token it might be safer thank you everyone for watching this video if you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe to my channel right now like this video if you have any questions write the comment and hit the bell to get informed about my new videos enjoy your life as a developer and keep learning interesting things